And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of GGR. Well, today we're gonna do a review episode on the Nikon AW120. After this. And here's a review of the Nikon AW120. This is a 16 megapixel little compact camera that's supposed to be rugged and waterproof at the same time. Uh, it has a focal length of uh, 4.3 millimeters to 21.5 millimeters, as well as an f-stop range of a 2.8 to 4.9. Um, basically, here's the first impressions that I had of it, have had of it actually when I um, first tried it out. Was that um, I think that it was one of the really, really standard-sized compact cams that you get out there. It's very standard, very normal. However, it feels just a wee bit plasticky. Um, but I'm not sure if they meant it to be that way, but, um, you know, I, I guess it just doesn't feel as um, expensive as the price commanded for this camera. Um, other than that, the, this camera goes waterproof up to 18 meters. That's the same as 59 feet as it, as it says here right on the camera. Uh, it has a, a shockproof um, body, of course, means you can drop it from up to 2 meters and, it, of course, the camera will stay fine, the elements will stay fine. And it is, um, of course, small enough to keep into your back pocket. But so far, um, we're testing the shots in at night. Actually, if you have the camera propped up on um, maybe a ledge or a tripod that's provided, you bring a tripod out for a camera like this. Um, you know, proper amounts of light gets into the camera, and I think things, um, the picture actually turns out pretty much fine. But um, other than that, you know, shooting at night, I, I mean, without the flash, that'd be. Um, it actually turns out to have not exactly very fantastic shots um, and rather blurry shots with uh, unable to um, boost the ISO up to high levels but that's not something that you have to worry about with the compact cam to be honest. Um, vibration reduction works perfectly with its 5-axis gyroscope thingy. Uh, other than that, you know, in, in the day it actually shoots pretty well, pretty much fine. The pictures come out pretty much okay. Um, nothing too bad over there. Um, at the back of the camera though, you have very simple and straightforward um, command controls here. Um, that goes from the zoom button to the, the zoom toggle switch actually, uh, and the record button, as well as the different options. You have very direct options for different things such as um, exposure compensation, the flash, and, and uh, as well as a macro mode. Um, another thing I would have to say is the weird placement of the shutter lens, which is um, over here. Not shutter lens, the weird placement of the lens, which is over here at the top left of the camera. So, you know, normally you have the lens element right smack in the center, but for this, it's at the top left. So, um, it, it takes kind of some getting used to, but I guess this allows you to hold the camera like that, you know, to get it more stable um, for shooting. Uh, other than that, it takes pretty long for an autofocus. There, about the, um, a fraction of a second, not, <laughs> say, a fraction of a second, but closer to a second, that'd be. Um, it takes some time to actually get the focus lock in and of course to get your shot, by then something would have already, you know, you would have already missed it and stuff like that. Um, other than that, bringing this out for maybe parties and whatnot would actually make a really, really good camera, especially if there's a swimming pool around. This camera performs pretty, pretty well um, in condition, in water conditions actually. It means, um, you know, if there's water being splashed on it or even taking pictures underwater. Um, it takes fairly good videos. Um, I've tested it in the rain, I've tested it um, underwater, and the videos comes out pretty much fine. Though that being said, I think the very interesting thing about this camera is the weather sealing and stuff like that as per this little toggle switch, uh, or lock switch actually for um, the corner over here, where you unhook it and then you can open it up so uh, water does not get into the camera. Uh, of course, it has some neat tricks up its sleeve also as per the GPS system which allows you to um, track your shots where you have taken the shots. This is pretty cool, especially if you're tracking um, you know, in the mountains or maybe going out to sea um, shooting pictures. Uh, I think this camera actually comes into its element regarding that as well as um, it has Wi-Fi capabilities which allows you to take pictures using the Nikon app. Uh, and, but other than that, the camera is pretty much standard as far as a compact camera goes. Um, this one would be probably in the range of a premium compact camera. Though that being said, I guess, should you buy this camera, the answer is if you are a person that enjoys 
being around water a lot, um, especially if you're diving, you want to take pictures, you know, wherever, in your swimming pool, in your neighbor's swimming pool, uh, or at the public swimming pool, or if you're a pervy perv like that. But other than that, <laughs> jokes aside, this camera works very well underwater. Um, I have friends who are divers that use this camera and they actually love it. Though a little word to the wise is to not to bring this camera past a certain point, past this 18 meter mark which they um, tell you not to go beyond and your camera will be fine because I have read reports of the LCD screen actually warping and whatnot. Um, one other thing to note with this camera would be uh, there's this little rattling sound if you can hear that. Now I'm, I'm holding the camera really, really tightly now. There's still a rattle sound, you know, I'm not sure what that is. Um, it could be that the plates aren't secured properly or whatnot, but um, might be a cause of concern, might not be. But so far, um, during this camera's, this camera's period, um, loan period with GGR, I guess, um, it has sort of performed pretty well, pretty um, adequately um, with our testing regimes. And so far, I think this camera might just do if, you know, you really are into taking shots of um, being in the water or maybe even having someone splashing water on you. I think this is the camera to go for. But that being said, at its price point, there are other competitors' cameras that actually provide um, pretty much more substantial colours um, as far as the pictures are concerned. But other than that, as far as waterproofing and um, water water pictures go, this is the water camera to get. Most definitely this one. So thank you for watching this episode of GGR. For the written review, do go to betterthanthis.com and check that out over there. Do subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment if you like to. And if you want to see uh, more stuff being unboxed and reviewed on the show, do just leave it down on the comments and we will try and get our hands on them. Thank you for watching this episode of GGR. Um, stay tuned for more, guys. Goodbye.